All right, welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study again. Hey, this is Patrick M. Wilcox, North Baptist Church. Had a little technical difficulty there. Uh, we can't even explain to you what happened, but something did, and so we got knocked off. Uh, now we're back on, uh, back going again. So uh, while we're here, I encourage you to go ahead and, and share this uh, on your page. Uh, get that going and, and uh, get things started here. Um, again, I'm not sure what uh, took place earlier, but uh, we've got it going now, so that's okay. And there we are. Okay. Hey, this evening we're in uh, Volume 3. We're in the Yellow Book. Uh, we're going to be in Session 12, the last one of this uh, volume. Next week we start the Blue Discipleship Path uh, Journey 4 uh, book. Uh, so if you don't have this Blue Book and you want one, uh, be sure to let me know. We'd love to... Uh, get one to you, uh, how, however, whether that's delivering or whether that's to the mail or whatever. The books are free, shipping, whatever would be free. Uh, you can just take part in those however you would like. Um, uh, again, we'll be in volume one of that next week. Uh, tonight, session 12, is uh, we go together uh, with Christ. Uh, so we're going to get started with that. Uh, let me give you a few announcements and some prayer concerns, and then we'll jump right into the Bible study this evening. Uh, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, if you want to go ahead and get that found out in your Bible, get a, get a direction you're going there, and uh, see the uh, announcements this evening. Um, uh, the food pantry is tomorrow at the Lighthouse uh, from 1 to 4 p.m., uh, for those that are working, uh, we do have a delivery truck coming tomorrow, so we'd encourage you to be there about 9.30ish uh, when the truck gets there. We'll get things unloaded, get set up, and get ready for uh, distribution tomorrow. Uh, then don't forget, write this down, July 10th from 3 to 6 p.m. That's the Lighthouse 3rd birthday party. Uh, we're getting things around, getting things ready, uh, getting pretty excited about what uh, is going to take place on Saturday. Uh, we've got our associational um, trailer we picked that up today it's got lots of fun things in it we have some games coming some uh, hot dogs uh, birthday cake uh, lots of things going on uh, bounce houses and, and so we invite you to to come by and, and join us uh, anytime from three to six or you can stay the whole time however it works uh, in your in your schedule anyway that's july 10th saturday uh, sunday morning we'll be live at 10 30 from uh, north baptist church uh, we're live on Facebook. Either way, you can join us um, and uh, be a part of the service there at 1030. We'll be in Psalms 22, uh, 30 through 31. And, uh, you know, Psalms 22 was one of the most uh, shared. It's the most uh, quoted psalm uh, in the New Testament. Lots of good things there if you want to read ahead on that. And then next Tuesday, July 13th, from 1 to 4 p.m., we'll have the uh, uh, food pantry at uh, North Baptist Church. Uh, that's for the north side residents only. There's uh, um, directions on where you need to live to take part in that. So if you have a chance to uh, look on Facebook there, it'll show you the, the boundaries for that. Uh, with that this evening, uh, I do want you to lift up some prayer concerns with me. Um, uh, Willie and Carl, uh, both of them for health. Uh, Jake Goodell is uh, on his overseas trip for the Marines now, and so we want to pray for him and just for God's direction in, in his life. Uh, pray for the Hills. They have made their move to uh, Arkansas to help them to pray they'll get settled in and uh, just get uh, grounded and founded and get in the direction that they uh, need to be going as well. Uh, pray for Don and Pat for health and for baby Asher, just continued uh, growth and health for him. Uh, pray for Linda with her knee. Uh, she's still having uh, just trouble getting things scheduled, getting things done. Uh, she does have, I believe, uh, uh, scheduled time for a, a consultation with the surgeon. Uh, so we just pray that, that gets uh, get going there. Uh, Steve Green, which is Joe's brother-in-law, uh, is going to have surgery on July 26th. Uh, so we want to lift him up in prayer and just for God's guidance for uh, both him and his wife and, and for the family as they go through this process. I uh, pray for my uh, nephew Charles and going through uh, chemo there in, in Wichita. Uh, we pray for...
that to really be successful in, in uh, combating that cancer that, that he has. And then pray for uh, Tony Anderson. And uh, Devin's father has some health concerns and has some upcoming tests, and we just want to lift him up in prayer. And then also for Cora. Uh, just continue to pray for her health and, and her recovery and uh, just uh, uh, just even all through this that she's uh, had quite an emotional roller coaster uh, that she would just be uh, filled with encouragement from the Lord and, and God would just guide and direct uh, with his purpose for her in that way. And so with that this evening, if you would join me in prayer, uh, we'll go ahead and get started this evening. Lord, we do thank you again this evening for uh, your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Uh, Lord, we think of uh, independence that we celebrated uh, this past weekend uh, with uh, freedoms of our country. And, and Lord, we know that uh, ultimate freedom uh, really comes from you. Lord, we thank you for the uh, freedom that we have, uh, freedom from sin that we find in your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that that would be uh, on our minds, on our hearts, not only a certain day of the year, but uh, throughout every day. Uh, Lord, that we would just give you praise and and thanksgiving for all the way you provide, not only for our salvation, but even for our daily bread. Lord, we do lift up those on our prayer concerns. Uh, we think of Willie and Carl uh, for health. I think of uh, uh, Scott and Tanya uh, for health and are unspoken. And, and then for their uh, parents, both uh, Betty and Georgia, and, and just the health concerns that they have. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Jake as he's in on overseas with the Marines, Lord, that you would just continue to uh, guide and direct him. Uh, you'd really um, fill a void uh, with him, Lord, and uh, uh, find a, a ministry that he can be a part of uh, while he's uh, serving in the military there. And uh, just allow him to be able to use the gifts that you've given him and, and allow that to be a blessing as well. Uh, we pray for the Hills as they've transitioned now to the to Arkansas, uh, Lord, that you would just help them to find a place to, to fit in and serve and, and be a part of a body and, and just be a, a real blessing there as well. Uh, I think of Don and Pat and the health concerns that, uh, that they both have, uh, which is ongoing, and Lord, we uh, just ask for continued guidance and direction in their lives, uh, continue uh, pray for good days for their health. And we pray for their uh, great-grandson, Asher, and, and just God's uh, uh, guidance and direction in his life as well. I uh, pray for Linda and her knee. Lord, we just ask you would continue to guide and direct her, uh, that you would uh, uh, strengthen her and uh, just give her the right uh, mindset during this time as she uh, moves forward for that uh, possible surgery. Lord, we do lift up Steve Green to you, uh, Joe's brother-in-law, and, and Lord, I know the uh, upcoming surgery from him seems uh, serious, but uh, we know that we uh, serve a God who is the almighty healer. And so, Lord, we ask for your touch upon his life. Uh, I think of Tony Anderson as well, Lord, with uh, health concerns and upcoming tests. And, Lord, that you would just uh, draw him closer to you at this time than, than ever. Uh, Lord, that you would just uh, uh, give him uh, uh, the ability to overcome. Uh, Lord, that you would just... Uh, uh, find the, uh, the people, the words, and uh, encouragement for him that would uh, draw him closer to you than ever before. Lord, we do pray for Tony and Michelle and their health concerns and, and uh, just continue to uh, be with them as they uh, are guided and directed by you. Uh, Lord, that you would give uh, Michelle especially just some, uh, some good days. I know she has some upcoming tests and uh, she's always anxious about those, not knowing what the outcome will be. But uh, Lord, we just pray that you go before her and give her a, a good return on that uh, test that's upcoming. So, Lord, this evening as we open up this Bible study, this final one in this session, Lord, I ask for your guidance and direction. And Lord, help us to really see the uh, importance of, of Bible study and connecting with one another, uh, connecting together, and, Lord, that you would receive the glory and honor. Uh, we just give you praise. We thank you. And in Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, again, this evening, you know, we are in... Uh, uh, the Yellow Book, uh, Volume 3, Session 12. Uh, hopefully you've turned there. 1 Corinthians uh, Chapter 12. <clears throat> that would go well, right? Chapter 12 and Session 12. Um, we're going to uh, work through this this evening and then begin on the uh, new book uh, for next week. Uh, hopefully you'll be uh, ready and excited about that. And I know it's in the midst of summer and all that's going on, but don't give up on us. You know, Even if you don't have a chance to watch it, uh, live on Wednesday nights. Be sure and, and gather around and watch it sometime during the week as we continue this uh, process of discipleship and how important it is for uh, each one of us. So uh, so keep that going. Keep it up and be sure and share it on your page. And then uh, if, even if you're not 
watching it live this evening. Be sure and share it in the days to come so others can, can see and take part in that. All right, so session 12, the uh, title is We Go Together with Christ. Uh, last week we talked about going with Christ uh, as individuals, but we're going to really uh, gather this evening's thoughts and topic on uh, going together. Uh, we, we are united as one. And so the key truth for this Bible session this evening is that Jesus sent us out as a community of disciples in order to make disciples. And so that's the way it's been since the very beginning of the session. It was really about becoming a disciple that makes disciples. Uh, we grow in our relationship with the Lord in such a way that enables us to help others uh, grow in their relationship as well. So if you've been transformed as a disciple of Jesus, uh, then you're a part of his body, you're part of the church, and because of that you have a specific role, you have a specific function uh, in the in the body as, as a member. Uh, you've been uniquely designed, uh, you were created by the master, and then you bring balance to the church. And so without you, it can't operate in the way that it's supposed to. It's really basically dysfunctional without you. Because you are an intricate part of all that's going on. <coughs> Excuse me, but being a part of the body of Christ doesn't start or stop within the, within the walls of that church because, because Jesus is the head of the church. And his will for the body is to make disciples. And so in last week's session, we took a deeper look at our, at our mission to make disciples. Uh, and we looked at what it meant to be an individual follower of Christ. Uh, we saw that making a disciple is a command, not a suggestion. And we learned that the process of discipleship making involves going out into the world, going and making. And then baptizing them who encounter Christ and teaching them how to practice the fundamental truths of God's Word. And so again this evening, you know, uh, we saw last week that the first step of, of real obedience uh, in any uh, believer is that uh, go through the waters of baptism. And so this evening, if you have not been baptized, that would be a good process, a good thing to start. Uh, maybe you should ask some questions uh, uh, about what it would mean for you to be baptized. Uh, what What is that? Baptism is not salvation. Uh, baptism is an outward expression of something that's already taken place on the inside. So then again, this evening, this session, we're going to explore what it means to make disciples, not only uh, individually, but corporately together as a body. And so as we begin this evening, I always ask kind of the same questions, you know, about, uh, you know, did you, did you work through the Bible study this past week? Were there things that really stood out to you? Uh, if you weren't working through the Bible study, you know, what, what section of, of Bible are you, are you reading? Are you following along a, a plan of reading God's Word and how, how important that is? Um, what did you learn this past week from your experience uh, in, in Bible study? Um, and then what questions would you like to ask? What, you know, what, are there things that, uh, are, are on your mind that you'd like to ask and, and you don't want to ask in front of everybody, just always remember that you can, uh, uh private message us, you can, uh, text us, email, whatever it takes to get a hold of us and we'd love to help uh, answer any questions if you have them. Or, you know, if you just got a praise that God is just doing something super in your life and, and you just got to tell somebody, hey, we'd love to hear that as well. Uh, so be sure and, sure and share that for us. So as you're, as you're going through your week, as you're reading the Bible, as you're adopting a plan of, of worship, uh, I encourage you to, to, to always to stop and to pray before you uh, engage in your Bible, that uh, you would ask the Lord to really uh, reveal himself to you. Uh, reveal things in your life to you and to uh, really get guidance and direction uh, from him. Help him to uh, help you to connect with Jesus and then uh, really 
as you read to uh, affirm the decision and the the opportunity to uh, be a part of the body of Christ and to join Him in mission. Uh, that's the that's the greatest part. So, so as we begin this evening, uh, in our last session we discussed uh, the individual calling of the of the Great Commission, uh, Matthew chapter twenty eight. Uh, we talked about. Uh, going we talked about making uh the the baptizing the all that is uh like i said is an after effect of something that's already taken place and so those are what we need to do is to go and to make and so here this evening we're in the the final section of this uh this quarter this uh this yellow in the volume three and so we are going to discuss something about the great commission but last week we talked about it being individually, uh, you or myself or, or others. Uh, this week we're going to look at it in depth from the church's standpoint, from that aspect. Uh, and one of the metaphors that the, that the Bible uses for the church is the body. And so as we read through this 1 Corinthians 12 this evening, you're going to see that. And so uh, we see it in several of Paul's letters. When he speaks of the body, it's really talking about the, the church, okay? So, the question this evening as we begin, do you enjoy going to the doctor? And no, hardly anybody enjoys going to the doctor, right? Uh, for one thing, you have to pay for it. For another thing, uh, we're always concerned that they're going to tell us something is wrong that we didn't know before. And so we always have that fear of the, of the unknown. And so not many, um, unless you're the wife of a doctor, uh, probably don't enjoy going to the doctor, right? Um, and so what's the worst part about going to the doctor? Well, maybe it's the long wait. Maybe it's the shot. Maybe it's the medication that you have to have afterwards. Maybe it's that thought of, well, we need to run some more tests. Oh, great, here we go. You know, increasing on all of this. And so uh, more wait time, more finances, more things that they investigate. Um, but then for you, what are, what are some of the questions that you ask the doctor, right, when you go? Um, do you ever ask questions? I know one thing that my, my doctor always asks me before I even get to ask him anything is, have you been exercising? Have you been getting that 30 minutes of, of physical exercise, vigorous exercise during the day? Uh, my my pat answer is not as much as I should, but I'm trying to do better. <laughs> right? And that's what we always say. Not, not as much as I should, but I'm trying to do better. And really, this time of year, it, it's easier because we're able to get outside, we're able to do some walking and, and maybe some lifting or or some things, uh, some vigorous, more exercise on the outside. Anyway, you may have noticed that when you go to the doctor, there's really a, a predictable routine. Uh, you go in, check in, you sit down in the seats. Uh, before you know it, they've called your name. You get up, they go in, you know, the first thing they say is, how are you doing? Then it's step up on the scale, right? It's see how tall you are, then we take you back to the room, and then they check her blood pressure, check her pulse, uh, make sure we're still kicking at that point, and uh, uh, they want to know how tall you are, how much you weigh, what's your blood pressure, uh, and then they ask you, do you have any allergies, uh, do you smoke, are you currently taking medications, uh, if so, what are those, and then are you experiencing pain or discomfort at this point. And so through, through hundreds of years of study, the medical profession has developed a, a really a, a baseline of questions. Uh, they, can, they measure these questions out, and by your answers, it helps them to, to go really in the, in the proper direction there. Uh, they can tell when a body is out of alignment. Okay? Not physical alignment, but just health-wise alignment. And so the body is, is specifically designed, it's intricately made, uh, it, it's complex, but after asking these few short questions and the uh, answers that you respond, 
it gives them a, a, a baseline of overall information about a person's health. Now for you this evening, what, what time in your life or what season in your life would you think that you were the most healthy or even the most uh, health conscious? You know, is that today? Uh, is that a period or a time in the past? Uh, what drove you to that point? And, and just how, how mindful today are you about your, your health? about your body. And so what are some important steps for promoting physical health? Well, we, we really have to have a purpose and a plan for what's ahead of us to really want to do something to help with our uh, physical health. One of the things my doctor always tells me is that, uh, Kim, you can always lose some weight and I'm thankful that he shares that with me in that kind and compassionate way, right? Um, a couple years ago, we, we did a, a keto diet here at the house and uh, lost an extremely amount of, of weight. I uh, really felt good about myself, uh, doing really well. Went on vacation. Left the diet at home. And by the time I come home, I was back on the road to being back where I, I was before. And so... Um, vacations can be good in that way, but also you have to be careful because you get back into the same old routines that you were before, and that's kind of what what took place in, in my life at that time. But now throughout the throughout the New Testament, we see the worldwide church is described as the body of Christ. Every individual, every disciple of Jesus has been included in this body along with every local church and every local congregation. Jesus himself governs, he directs the church, he's the head, and as the body we're to follow along and go in his direction. And so interestingly enough, there's a, there's a few basic questions that can help evaluate a physical body. There's key to help us to evaluate the health and the productivity of a church. We know the church is healthy when the disciples of Jesus work together in an effort to obey him and make more disciples. And so really what we're saying here is that um, for the body to be healthy, there needs to be unity. And not unity just for the sake of unity, but unity that relates to Christ. He is leading and his direction. And because his leading and his direction would allow us then to be a part of making more disciples. Okay? Uh, again, that that metaphor in the New Testament, uh, 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 the body is the church. Just, just correlate those two together. Now again, think about the questions that the doctor asks. And then think about the questions that we should ask as a church body. Right? Are we functioning healthy? Do we have unity in Christ? Are we moving forward for Him? Do we want what Jesus wants? Do we want to be following Him in that way? And what would make a difference in our lives to get us to that point? So in the same way, those few basic questions allow uh, the doctor or the staff there, the nurses, to, to kind of have a baseline of, of your physical health. Those key factors are the same way that works in the body, which is the church. Okay, Are we working together in the name of Jesus to make more disciples? If we're not, what do we need to be doing? How do we need to focus that? How do we need to get going in that direction so that we're actually doing what 
Jesus wants to be, he wants us to be doing. So the concept of the church existing as the body of Christ is found throughout the New Testament. The writings of the Apostle Paul offer the deepest and mo most direct references to that idea, uh, including how we should understand the body and why it's important to do so. Okay, so with that, this evening we, we think... Um, The letter to the Corinthians here that the Apostle Paul had written, uh, they had experienced, the Corinthian church, they had experienced um, all kinds of spiritual gifts uh, in their body. But yet they were plagued with problems, and that was the reason for the Apostle Paul's letter. And so in exercising their gifts, they did so in prideful ways. They wanted to be seen by others. It wasn't about unity. It was about individuality. There was favoritism in that church. They looked at some members more important than others. And at that point, though, uh, for the Apostle Paul, in writing to the church in Corinth, it was to show that they're purpose of their gifts was to build one another up, not build division, not tear it down, not separate it. Their gifts were to be brought together to build up the body in Corinth. And so your, your gifts this evening now uh, come together are to be used and given so that they are uh, building up the body of Christ where you serve, where you're a, a part of, okay? And so the passage here in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it's a, it's a helpful example, it's a reminder of the Apostle Paul's view of the body of Christ. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to look for Paul's strength, we're going to look for Paul's um, confidence in his words, and remember, he's talking about the body, which is the church. And so for us, let's see where that leads us this evening, okay? All right. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm going to read 12 through 20, and then verse uh, 27. For just the body is one, and has many parts, and all the parts of that body, though many, are one body. So also is Christ. For we're all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Indeed, the body is not one part, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it is not for that reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body. It is not for that reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God has arranged each one of the parts in the body just as he wanted. And if they were all the same part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Verse 27, now you are the body of Christ, and individual members of it. So we see here in these verses from the Apostle Paul that um, we are all specifically designed to be a part of the church. We all have special, unique talents and gifts to be used in the church not to build division, but to build up the body of Christ. And when you don't serve, when you hold back using your gifts, whether it's for your own personal use, or because you're discouraged or despondent because of something else, the body is not functioning in the way it should. And then it ends up, uh, when your physical body doesn't function the way it should, we go to the doctor. Okay, what's wrong? How can we get this body functioning again so it's acting like it's supposed to so I can do what I need to do? 
Well, that's almost what we need to do as a church when we get to the point where we don't seem like we're functioning as a body. Only instead of going to the doctor, we go to the great physician. Okay, Lord, how do we need to get back to doing what we need to be doing? How do we get to be using our gifts in an appropriate way? And if we were to ask the Lord that, I am sure he would say what Paul just said. I've given you gifts not to build yourself up, not for you to look flashy or talented, but for the edification of the body. For building my body up. And so unity comes in Christ when we're making disciples. We're not trying to make a name for ourselves or a name for the church. We're trying to make disciples for Jesus. So why was it important that all these disciples of Jesus understood and applied those verses? Because sometimes we can get to the point where we almost... Uh, I know a lot of people think their gift is, is insignificant. Well, I can't sing, or I can't preach, or I can't pray well, or I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. But the problem is, we can do what we're supposed to do effectively. And so we need to find what we're called to do by God, and do that effectively so that it supports the body in the way that it should. We all cannot be a hand. We all cannot be an eye. We all cannot be an ear. But we need ears and we need eyes and we need hands. But we need those things that connect the rest of the body together as well. And so the unity then is in, is in Christ. And so we need to understand then the, the goal of Paul's metaphor of the church is that body. And the body to function well has to be operating at 100%. Everybody using their gifts for the purpose of building up the body of Christ. Now, do you think, for those of you that watch this and go to North, do you think if we were actually doing what we were supposed to be doing, that it would make the body operate better? Or do you feel that we're already doing that? Now, I don't know that you could ever really get to the point of thinking that we're already there, because I don't think we are. And then if we get to that point, and God continues to encourage the usage of the body, he will bring other people in to fill the spots that he now has called the church to do. Does that make sense? And so he's, he's communicating, Paul is, he's communicating this to this church in Corinth. They, remember, they already have gifts. They understand gifts, and they're using them for their own personal use more so than the church. And so Paul's writing this letter to the church in Corinth which relates to all of us today about the principles of the body. And so why would the church in Corinth need that message? Well, the same reason we need that message today. We get sidetracked. We get caught up sometimes on our own things, on our own doings that we don't continue to follow what he wants us to do. So, so Jesus calls his followers, he calls his disciples to be intricately and intimately involved in the church. Every one of them. There is not a believer in Jesus Christ that is not called to be involved in the church. That's just not, those two don't go together. The moment we experience salvation, we're grafted into the body of Christ as one of those many parts. Uh, when, I, when I read this this week, it made me think of, of uh, John chapter 15 and being grafted into the vine and, and uh, being a part of it. And, and so Jesus takes take us from where we were 
and then he grafts us into his body right where he wants us to be doing what he wants us to do. So we have to believe about ourselves that we have gifts, that we are talented in Christ, and we have to understand that to really understand this metaphor of the body and the church in, in a real way in our minds. And of course, what kind of things keep us from doing so? Well, we look around and see others who are talented. Sometimes they use their talents for themselves instead of the body. And that's not what Paul wants. He says, we are the body of Christ. And so one of the more uh, interesting implications of Paul's teaching there in 1 Corinthians 12 is that there's no such thing as an isolated disciple. You know, it's become popular in recent years for people to proclaim their intentions to follow Jesus without ever connecting with the church. And that is completely non-existent in the New Testament. As soon as they accepted Christ, they were in and as part of the body. And they were not only in and a part of the body, they were serving, using their talents in that body. And so that, that's key this evening. If there was, if there was points, that would be one of the points that we really need to, to grasp this evening. We're not called to be a Lone Ranger Christian. Uh, there's not one in the scriptures. They're all connected to one another. They're unified through Christ. And they're serving to make more disciples. Okay? And so we've even got to a point today where it's, it's a struggle, I know, because of COVID that we become more comfortable sitting at home than we are in serving at the church. Now, I, I'm grateful that you're watching on Facebook. But again, we need to not let this keep us from using our talents and gifts in whatever way we can to serve. So to be a disciple of Jesus means that we're intimately and intricately involved in the church from the moment that we experience salvation. So how would you describe your experience with church over the years? Is, is it good? Have you continued to serve? Have you grown in your relationship? Have you grown in your service? Remember, you are a part of the body of Christ. And that, this evening, is wonderful news. That's exciting to think that, that Jesus loves you so much that he would die for you so that you could live for him. Because even with the church's mistakes, all the mistakes that they make in churches today and, and the, the failures, Jesus is still the head and you are part of his body, which means that you are connected to Jesus. Verse 18 in, in our uh, Second Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians, chapter twelve, verse eighteen, says, "But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as He wanted them to be." So Paul writes that all parts of the body function just how the Lord wants it to, and that means that not only are we connected with Jesus as part of His body. He positions us in just the right place with just the right gifts to help the church accomplish the work that God has called us to do. And it's unfortunate, I really believe, that sometimes when we don't use our gifts to build the body, God uses somebody else with that gift to do just that. The only thing is we miss out on being a part of the body, which is what we're called to do. That's what we're called to do. So we can't allow the, the, the pride of our own gifts to cause division in the church ever. We need to recognize that all of us have essential roles to play. And it's not about who has first seat or first fiddle or first flute. It's that we're all part of the band. And it even takes a janitor to clean up afterwards. Everybody has a part. And so we need to think, you know, today, 
what benefit are you to the church? See, we like to think in our commercial age today, what benefits do I receive from the church, right? Because even when we go look for a new job, what benefits am I going to get from this job, from serving, from doing my duty? What benefits am I going to get? And so I'm going to turn the table this evening and ask you, what benefits are you providing the church today? Period. Your gifts. How are you using them? What are you doing with them? How are you allowing them to be made? If we focused more on serving our local body with the gifts that God has given us, instead of taking what we can get, it would change everything. Our whole society is about taking. But as you read through the Gospels, Jesus was about giving. And that's what he calls his body to do. So there's no question then that being a part of the church, both, both in the, the local congregation and in smaller groups and even like Bible studies like, like this this evening, uh, it provides benefits to you. But it also provides benefits to others. We find community. We find friendship. We find fellowship in the church. And I'll be honest with you, as, as good as Facebook has been to us with allowing us to get our message out there, it is still not the same as you being there in person. It, it, it can't. Now, there's great thoughts in that. We can still do this while we're on vacation. You can still go to the lake on the 4th of July and, and still be a part of the church body. Yes, that's true. But when you get back, you need to be a part of the church body. And not just a part, you need to be in fellowship. You need to be in friendship. You need to be in, in Bible study, in connecting with others so that they see and connect with you. The body of Christ wasn't designed solely to bless the members of the body. The body of Christ exists to accomplish the will of the head, which is Jesus Christ. And Christ's will for the church is to make more disciples. Now, if I was on Sunday morning and we were in the congregation, that's where I would say, okay, everybody say it with me, right? Jesus' will for the church is to make disciples. It's not to comfort the body. That should happen automatically. If we're functioning, the body should be comforted. But if we're functioning correctly, we should not only be comforting the body, but we should be making disciples. So in Acts chapter 2, verse 41 to 47, it says, Those who accepted his message were baptized. And that day about 3,000 people were added to them. And so baptism is a connection of our relationship with Jesus Christ. It lets others know that we have given up our old life and we are now following Christ. All right? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe. They were amazed as many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now, all the believers were together and held all things in common. Okay? They sold their possessions and the property and distributed the proceeds uh, to all as they, as they needed. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple. They broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Every day the Lord added to the number of those who were being saved. They were making disciples. Who were making disciples. That's how the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. There's the Great Commission right there. They were just making disciples. And by making disciples, then they were baptizing these new converts. As they were baptizing these new converts, they were teaching them to obey the Lord Jesus Christ and the commands and how to live as a Christian in today's world. And it just reproduced itself. 
you know, so so what are some practical ways we as a congregation can uh, follow through on this great commission? Well, it starts right here with our own heart. We've got to become a disciple. We've got to get to the point where we do not know it all, and we don't know it all. And if we're submissive to the Lord, he will continue to teach and to guide and direct us into what he purposely has for us. And as he does that, as we come together together, then we can encourage one another and it will drive us to want to make more disciples. More disciples. Not more church members, not more pew warmers or seat goers, but more disciples. So has the Holy Spirit been, been leading you to participate in the church? If you've been following this body, I don't see how, or this Bible study, I don't see how it can't, because that's a part of discipleship. Christ wasn't designed, the body of Christ wasn't designed to bless the other members of the body. The body of Christ was designed to make disciples. They were to make disciples. The church will take on the personality and the priorities of the body, of its members. What are the personalities and what are the priorities? It should be discipleship. It should be service. If that's what it is, if we're serving the king and we're trying to make disciples then that becomes a priority in the body and it becomes a priority in the members. Some may not like that and flow away and others will like that and flow in. God directs. The message we should continue to lift high in the corporate setting of the church is that encouraging and challenging one another to, to keep up with the Great Commission. We should be walking in on Sunday mornings or on Wednesday nights on Bible study and say, Hey, who'd you share Jesus with this week? Hey, did you get a chance to share with anybody? Hey, what'd you do for Jesus this week? Hey, what did Jesus do in your life this week? We shouldn't be worried about who's, who the chief signed or did the Royals win or lose yesterday. That's okay. They won today. But... Are we making disciples? 2,000 years from now, we're in eternity. It's not going to matter what pro team won or lost today at all. But you know what's going to matter? Who you shared Jesus with. Are they there? Are they in eternity with you because your heart was so passionate about sharing Jesus with them? So that's what we should be challenging one another with. God has called each of us. He's given us talents. He's given us gifts to use for his purpose, not for ours. You know, we can see the, the work of the body of Christ there in Acts chapter 2. They were functioning. They were doing things that, that made disciples. They were being encouraged by Jesus being the head of the body. And they were just functioning like they were supposed to. That's what the Great Commission is about. So, though the church um, participated in, in multiple different activities, the greatest goal of what they were doing was making disciples. They fellowshiped together, they broke bread, they, they prayed, they, uh, they, they sold possessions, they gave to the poor, they, they did all these things, but the main goal in doing all the things that they were doing was making disciples. And because they were doing what God called them to do, Scripture says, God and added to their numbers daily. People, disciples, were making disciples. And because of that, they were making more disciples. And so God was bringing together the people that needed Jesus. And so the mission to make disciples is one of the main things that, that unites us as believers about making disciples. 
We don't have to agree on everything like worship style, okay? Uh, we don't have to agree on everything about the decorations inside or what the church looks like. You don't even have to agree on all of the teaching methods. But we must come together in unity about a common mission to make disciples because that is Jesus' desire for his body. And we are his body, gifted and grafted into his body. That's what he's called us to do. It's not always easy for people to work well together. You know, not even not even disciples of Jesus. It, it can be difficult to set aside our own egos, our own wants, our own agendas, to function as a team for the betterment of the body. But that's what Jesus calls us to. So it's important for the members, to, all of the members, to come together and be intentional about finding out what ways helps others strives to do what they can do. Some of the simplest methods for strengthening the bonds within the body are sometimes the most effective. One of the simplest methods for strengthening the body is prayer. Are you praying for unity in the body? Are you praying that you will be an instrument of that change to be part of that body? And so when our group comes together and we intercede for one another in the presence of God, what we pray for is greater unity. We develop greater levels of, of trust encouragement and appreciation for one another. So we're to pray for one another. We're to share about issues or circumstances that we need prayer for. God created us to need one another and to create us in a need to need Him. So as we go through Bible study this evening, there's a lot to think about. But God has called you to make disciples, to serve in His body. So in addition to studying God's Word, we need to we need to work to create a plan in our lives where we where we study God's Word, where we worship, and where we apply the things that we learn. Just like this evening, we had to learn that. That God's goal for us is to make disciples. It's not about us. It's not about whether we're comfortable or or we feel that all of our needs have been met. We're to meet the needs of others, Jesus said. So we're to connect to God with through prayer. We're to spend time with God by engaging in, in discipleship opportunities with one another. And so I want you to uh, I want you to look at your calendar. Whether it's on your phone or whether it's on your wall, maybe it's on your desk or tablet or wherever you're looking right now at. And what is your current involvement with your local church? There are 24 hours in a day. There are seven days in the week. Out of those 24 hours a day, seven days a week, how many hours, how much involvement are you initiating in the local body of the church? How much are you investing in your relationship with the Lord? How much are you investing in making disciples and making disciples? And making disciples. So are you fully investing yourself in the body of Christ? Are you using the gifts that God has given you right where you are 
to do what he's called you to do. The memory verse for this week is Colossians chapter 1, 17 and 18. It says, He is before all things, and by him all things are held together. He is also the head of the body, the church. He's the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. And if you were to take that verse this evening, and on that last word in that verse, 18, where it says, so that he might come to have first place in everything, somewhere you either need to rewrite this out or circle that and go up to the top of your page in your Bible, wherever it is, so that he might have first place in my life. Not Pastor Kim's, not Shelley's, not the deacons, not somebody else's, somebody on Facebook. He needs to have first place in your life, period. My life, period. I need to be making disciples. I need to be disciples. I need to do what I can to better the unity of the body. Which, by the way, is Christ. So I want you to identify a church function or a, a group encounter, whether that's Facebook Live next Wednesday night Bible study, whether that's the Lighthouse birthday party Saturday, whether that's church service on Sunday morning, 10.30, whether it's the food pantries. I, I don't know. You need to identify some church function or, or group encounter in the near future that you can invite someone to. Whether that's friends or family, whatever it is that you invite uh, someone to. Okay, can you do that for me? Help them to meet Jesus. Some way, somehow, I want you to help them to meet Jesus. That's what we're called to do. So we need to be alert for opportunities for an invitation. Uh, one, of, one of the greatest things is that uh, we just don't invite people to church anymore. Oh, they won't go, or they already go somewhere else, or, you know, that might be true. But God could be calling them to go with you, however it works, okay? So uh, invite somebody to some church function, something that's going on. And then invite a fellow disciple, okay, that's not somebody that doesn't know, that's just a fellow disciple, to join you in a spiritual activity, studying God's word, maybe even memorizing a scripture, uh, prayer, praying together, some type of evangelism, uh, fasting together uh, for just a, even a meal or a day or a period of time, something. So in, invite somebody else to some function and then invite another disciple to join you in doing something. And so we have multiple people on this Facebook this evening. And I want you, you can even ask one of them to join you in prayer for something. Join you in fasting through a meal or something to get your life closer to Jesus. Uh, you can go across the board here. Look at the names that are on there. It doesn't have to be somebody that's in your family or close to you. It can be one of the other ones. Maybe you just want to try to memorize the scripture and you just need them to help you try to do that. Whatever it is. So you got two things for a challenge this week. One, invite somebody to some function. Two, invite one of these disciples 
or another one to join you in some type of function. Okay, whatever it is. Um, uh, we're going to be out of time. There's lots of good stuff. Don't skip this Bible study if you if you don't have, uh, if, if you've got it. it. It's a great one to close out this one in. Uh, I'm going to do a couple more things and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop for this evening. But um, if you've been transformed as a disciple of Jesus, then you're part of his body, the church, and you have a specific role and a function in that body as a member. You've been uniquely designed and specifically placed to advance the work of the broader church within the community of your local congregation, your group of body that you're a part of. And one of the best one of the best ways to make sure you're contributing well is to identify your role. What is your role? What is your function in the church? If you're a part of the North Baptist Church, you have a role. You have a function. Even if you join us on just Wednesday night, there's somehow you can take part in the function of the body. What is your role? What is your, what is your function? What ways have you been gifted? How can you contribute to the life of the ministry of the church in the community? So those are the questions that have been uh, going on throughout this session, uh, Volume 3. And the Apostle Paul, he's he kind of given us some insight to this role in the church during the, the letter to the Ephesians. And I'm going to close with this this evening. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 through 16. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. He himself, Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers equipping the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with the stature measured by Christ's faithfulness. Then we will no longer be little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness in the techniques to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way to him who is the head, Christ. From him the whole body, fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by proper working of each individual part. You are an individual part of this body. Without you, we cannot function the way we're supposed to. So you need to see what is my function and role in this body. What can I do to lift that body up to help make more disciples? What are some additional roles or functions that can be carried out by the members, by the body? So Paul's emphasis in verse 16, he said, From him the whole body is fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. Your individual part. If the body is to be built up, if the body is to remain healthy, it's going to require every individual part working purposefully for the way that it was created. And that's you. Every disciple of Jesus has a share in maintaining the health, the productivity, and the unity of the church body. We have a responsibility to Jesus to do our part in helping fulfill the mission, which is to make more disciples. We are never to neglect our duty. Jesus made that clear when he shared about the parable of the talents uh, in Matthew chapter 25. So some he gave five, some he gave two, some he gave one. Uh, those that used their gifts and multiplied them, he continued to give more. For those he didn't, who did not use their gifts in the proper way, those were, were taken away. So it's your choice. 
what objects are holding you back from, from doing what needs to be done? What has God called you to do? Well, if you need help discussing that, we'd be glad to work with you through that. Don't forget you've got two things. One, invite somebody to a function. Two, invite one of the other disciples, even here on Wednesday night this evening, and you can look around and see some names on there. Um, invite them to take part with you in, in doing something. Memorizing a verse, prayer, fasting, something. Doing, just do, do something that's going to be part of the betterment of the body. Hey, next week we're going to be starting Volume 4. If you don't have a book and you want one, message me. If you don't have a book, uh, the books are free. Uh, there's no charge. Jesus is free, and so are these books. Uh, whether it's shipped to you or hand-delivered, uh, we can get them to you. We've got several ready to go. We start that next week. You don't have to have a book to follow through Bible study, uh, but it does great throughout the week if you've got time to do some. Uh, these are great Bible studies. I've got the past four if anybody's interested in needing some of the other ones. So we would love to have you take part in that. Hey, I always give you the opportunity, if you want to take part in the ministry at North Baptist Church, you can do so by, by giving of your tithes and offerings. Uh, you can do so through the uh, Generosity by Lifeway app that you can find on our Facebook or our webpage. Uh, we do have the webpage you can always go look at. Uh, it has all the back messages on it. Uh, it has things that you can see what we're doing and are part of. Uh, there's even some stuff that's even so new it's not even on now with, uh, with the North Baptist uh, new um, food pantry there that we've got started. Anyway, if you want a book, let me know. Um, if you want to give, uh, you can do that through there, through the, uh, the app. You can do it securely through yourself. You can also mail a check to the church, put attention to Linda, or you can even come join us on a Sunday morning at 1030 and just drop it in the offering plate. Say, I want to be a part of this body. I want to help serve whatever we can do to make disciples of this community. So with that this evening, hey, love you guys. Um, so excited to have you join us this evening. Continue to share this on your page. Uh, uh, be a part of making other disciples. That's what we want to be and do. And so this evening, we're going to turn it over to you. You've got some homework to do this week. Uh, keep up with it. Love you guys. If you need anything, let me know. I sure hope to see you at the food pantry or at the Lighthouse birthday party on Saturday. Hey, love you guys. See you. Good night.